Now, after having this new J. Cole album KOD on repeat for a couple days non-stop, I think it's time for a review, so without wasting any time, let's get it popping. So let's go through every single track one by one starting with the intro, and then I'll kinda give my thoughts on the album as a whole after I'm done doing that. By the way, definitely drop a like on this video if you enjoyed it. I don't usually like making album reviews, but since a lot of you guys have asked me to do it, here I am going out of my way, so let's get started. Now the intro kinda sets the tone for the entire project, which I thought was a good thing. It really shows showed me from the get-go that he had a clear vision for where he wanted to take this, even though I personally would actually prefer a song as an intro. I think having a song would be way more powerful than just having a narration over some instrumentals. And on one hand, you could call the intro lazy because it wasn't Cole coming up with a creative intro in terms of a song, but then again, I wasn't really disappointed with it. But let's move on to song number two, which is K.O.D. Now, this is pretty much the banger of the entire project. The beat is super hard and this is exactly what I've always wanted from Jay Cole ever since Born Sinner. I've talked about in the past how I feel like he's been a little bit defensive with his rapping style and not so aggressive for the past few years, especially on For Your Eyes Only. But on KOD, he kind of channeled his more raw and aggressive style that I don't think he's given too much of. Anyway, let's move on to the third song, which is Photograph. This right here might be one of the smoothest J. Cole tracks of all time. During the first few seconds of me listening to the song, I thought it was going to be a super slow song, but of course, that turned out to be wrong since the track contains a lot of very intense intense flows. But I like that there's some contrast between the very hypnotic hook and the verse that comes right after it. This is a song that paints an image of the youth in the social media age where you fall in love with someone because you saw their Instagram pictures. For me personally, the follow back line gave it away very easily. And as soon as I heard that, the concept of the song wasn't too hard to figure out. And looking at the bigger picture of the album, I think this fits very well on it considering the concept. Since one of the meanings on the project is kids on drugs, you could say that the drugs isn't really drugs, but it's social media media. And this really creates room for discussion and interpretation, which I think is a good thing. Now, let's move on to the next track, which is The Cutoff featuring Kill Edward. So this is one of those tracks that's dealing with toxic real-life relationships. And Cole has a verse where he talks about how he's a good person and there's a couple people he had to cut off because they were using him. And initially, I thought Kill Edward was J. Cole's stepfather himself. But what he said in a recent interview was that his stepfather who left him and his mom back in 2003 inspired the Kill Edward alter ego that that's featured on the project. But this might actually be one of my least favorite tracks on the project, just for the simple fact that it wasn't giving me an understanding for the rest of the album. More than anything, what I was getting from this track is that it was a way for him to vent, and it wasn't really playing into the album concept as a whole. Now, let's move on to the next song, which is ATM. The repetitive hook on this one is surprisingly good, and even though it is so repetitive, it fits right with the concept of the track. Here we get a look into J. Cole's relationship with money, and he even goes back in time and starts reminiscing about a time when he was a materialistic person. Because there was a time when J. Cole used to rock chains and designer brands, believe it or not. Even though this is an introspective track where there's a lot of parts on here that makes you realize he's kind of making fun of other people who are addicted to money, he's personally in a place in his life where he doesn't value money as much as he used to. So I see this as a way for him to teach other people that you can go from valuing money so much and not really caring about it at the end. Anyway, let's move on to the next track which is Motivate. When I heard this for the first time, I thought that J. Cole decided to add a random feature in the beginning of the track because it does not sound like him at all. But of course, it is J. Cole himself. He's kind of just manipulated the voice a little bit to make it sound like the, you know, the mumble rappers. But it turns out that he's speaking from the perspective of rappers who are motivated by money. And as I said before, he could be talking about himself because there was a point in his life where he was super materialistic. But just from listening to the song and reading the lyrics, it doesn't sound like he's talking that much about himself. But let's move on to the next track, which is Kevin's Heart. If you've seen the music video to the song, then you know that this is a reference to Kevin Hart but the track isn't entirely only about that. There's a couple of drug references in here that relates directly to the album's meaning, but this is one of those songs where I don't have that much to say about other than I didn't think it was a bad song. But then again, it didn't give me a whole lot to talk about and contemplate on, so yeah. Let's move on to the next track, which is Brackets. This one is basically all about taxes, taxes, and taxes. Not really a topic I thought would have came up in an album like this, but I guess it does make sense because money is a reoccurring topic and theme on this album. I think the very smooth hook of J. Cole saying, whoa, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, let's just forget that ever happened. But I think that very smooth hook on brackets brought a different atmosphere to the track and I really enjoyed it. But on brackets, Jayco is asking questions like where is my tax money going and why is our community still filled with poverty and no education? Because I'm damn sure paying a lot of money to the government. And yeah, those are questions someone like him should definitely ask because he's making so much money. And I even remember seeing a video of Cardi B a couple weeks back where she was questioning the same thing. We are entertainers, we're making all this money, but where the hell is our money going? Even though this is not my personal favorite track on here, this might actually be the most powerful one on the entire album. Cole really goes in depth and brings up a lot of good points when it comes to a lot of things, for example, about the government. For example, he's talking about how the leaders of the government decide an entire community's future, and that's not something he personally agrees with. And my interpretation was that he was trying to say most of the time these leaders don't really have a positive agenda with everything they're doing since it's motivated by the wrong things like power and money. In general, being motivated by those things isn't necessarily a bad thing per se, but when the decisions you make is gonna affect millions of people, then yes, it can be a bad thing. What I would like to see is a music video for this track because I think if it does get played the right way, it's definitely gonna be one of the most powerful music videos in a while. But let's move on to the next track, which is also my absolute favorite from the entire album, and that is Once an Addict. This song really shows exactly why J. Cole is one of the best storytellers as far as the new generation of rappers go. The story on this one is basically about how his mother used to struggle with drugs in her life and he included a lot of his own personal experiences on here as well. He's really going deep into his mentality and his perspective of his mother and her suffering. He's also telling us that he wished he would have interfered with her situation and tried to help her. And I like the level of vulnerability Cole was showing on here. He wasn't holding anything back and this is personally my favorite track on here. But let's move on to the next track which is Friends featuring Kill Edward. Here we have Edward being used as a symbol for not using drugs again. And I saw this track as an attempt at trying to educate people by telling them that drug addiction is usually deeper than just what we see. I think this specific message was very much needed on the album. This one takes a different direction compared to all the other tracks on KOD. It came from a place of educating and understanding which I definitely enjoyed. But let's move on to the next song which is Window Pain. I'm gonna have to say that this is my second favorite song on the album right after Once an Addict. First of all, the hook on this one is just great. But the storytelling on here really reminds me of Once an Addict and that's probably why I love it so much. This is a very introspective track where J. Cole is speaking everything he wants into existence. He tells a story about a little girl whose cousin got shot while she was with him and that really touched J. Cole emotionally and he shares that story on this song right here. I like this track because it was one of the more personal ones on the project and it kind of gave me a different side of J. Cole himself. But let's move on to the next track which is also the last one and that is 1985. So I'm 99% positive that if you're watching this video you've most likely seen my video about the song so I'm not gonna talk about it that much this time. But what can I say there was a lot of truth on here. J. Cole pretty much schooled all the new wave rappers by giving them some brotherly advice and even though this wasn't the best track on the album this is definitely one of the most interesting parts on here. I think it was a good way to end the project because now I'm wondering what exactly is the next album gonna be about. Now to end it all as a whole was this a good album? I definitely think it was. Not his best but it was still a good album. As J. Cole himself said even though the album has a concept it can be interpreted in different ways. It sounds like to me the first half of the album was him mocking the current state of hip hop by including what they do in his music and doing it better than the lean sipping zam popping drug promoting rappers. There was a lot of repetitive hooks and a lot of trap beats on the first half but then on the second half that's when the real shit starts coming out. So there is a very noticeable contrast in the middle but me personally I enjoyed the second half way more because it just sounded more like J. Cole himself. Now those are my thoughts on J. Cole's album KOD but what do you personally think about the album? Did you think it was a good album or did you not think it was a good album? Definitely let me know in the comment section below and let's have a discussion about this. By the way don't forget to drop a like on this video for ya boy if you did enjoy it. Anyway let's have a discussion about J. Cole's album KOD. But as always if you're new here don't forget to subscribe to this channel. This channel is all about bringing together people like you who enjoy music and start a discussion on different topics like this. And of course like the video if you enjoyed it follow me on all my social media accounts. It's on the screen and I'm out.